The Department of State Services, DSS, says it has confirmed a plot by some key players to install an interim government in Nigeria and stop Bola Ahmed Tinubu from being inaugurated as president. According to them, the plot includes embarking on violent protests nationwide to engineer the declaration of a state of emergency as well as securing frivolous cut injunctions to stall the inauguration. Well, in a statement signed by the public relations officer Peter Afunaya, the plot being pursued by some entrenched interests as not only an aberration but a mischievous way to set aside the constitution and undermine civil rule as well as plunge the country into an avoidable crisis. Well, joining us this morning here at News Central's Breakfast Central is Patrick Agbambu, security and safety advocate and of course CEO Security Watch Africa Initiatives. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Patrick. Thank you for having me. All right, let's go straight into this. Um, the DSS has come uh, into uh, the fold. When we say into the fold, first off, we've seen a trajectory, or better still, we've seen a sequence of many who have said that uh, May 29 uh, would probably uh, not happen. Now, this started off uh, from the social media space, of course, and then came from the different political parties, talk of the APC uh, by its spokesperson, and not forgetting to um, others who have been following, other actors as well, in this uh, particular journey concerning Nigeria's election. Now, the DSS has come out uh, to hold forth and say, listen, we have credible information. What are your thoughts on the DSS uh, spokesperson statement? And should the DSS have come out this way? Or better still, uh, could they have named names and made it clearer? Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I think uh, my thought is that, um, yes, it's, it's timely. I personally, I have also come across um, uh, evidences and um, moves that have been made by some people to actually create some crisis. Uh, it's not just only in the social media, but also um, physically and um, to na nationally. The plan, um, to me, it's, um, it's not um, supposed to uh, be carried on because um, elections have been held. Whatever position anybody holds about it, there are constitutional means of seeking redress. And I think that that should be exploited and um, so that Nigerians can move ahead. Um, unless if the people are saying they don't have the trust and believe in the judiciary and all that, that initial, everybody has signed to it. So it's, it's a contract that you must abide by the rules. So I think that um, what the DSS came out to do it's timely. Um, it's very, very evident and so clear, even for those who are not in the security sector, to see that uh, there are a lot of agitations going on. Um, there are daily uh, protests going on, and um, uh, it depends on how long this goes. And when the protest continues, then uh, you may have counter protests coming on, and you also uh, you can't uh, rule out uh, some uh, hoodlums uh, trying to disrupt uh whatever reason those people are protesting but if you have a case in court already i don't see any reason for the protest so i think um, it's it's well and good that dss has come out to warn nigerians about a pending uh, situation or what is already playing out um I, in terms of naming mentioning names i don't think it's um it should be because i believe that uh, those people who are either financing or sympathetic to it or the actual actors are being monitored by the DSS and then um, this may start happening if they continue uh, with uh, their plans uh, that I'm sure that uh, Nigerians may, may be shocked and to see uh, the quantum of um, destruction of plans uh, some people uh, have already made. Um, prior to the um, presidential poll, we are seeing that Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai had also made some statements alleging that the Naira scarcity was also a part of the plot, uh, plot to make uh, provision for an interim government scuttle the elections in such a way that there wouldn't be some form of a peaceful handover. I mean, that's, that's me summarizing it. Uh, would you say that we're still experiencing it, unfortunately, we're still experiencing the cash crunch whilst the CBN says it's made large deposits to the banks. The banks are unfortunately unable to dispense it because we do hear some of the banks saying that they do not have enough cash. Um, is there any possibility that this uh, cash crunch that we're experiencing is also part of the plan to scuttle the democracy like it was being alleged? 
Um, I must say here that um, many of us are not happy with the implementation of the um, uh, the Naira swap, and um, and um, it's um, it's sad that um, the implementation went the way it went, and so many lives were lost, and Nigerians are actually uh, experiencing lots of difficulties. But um, to say that is uh, is the plan for the to scuttle the election and interim government, I disagree with the government of Kaduna State in that regard. Uh, these are struck. Some people have said. Um, um, why did it come at this time close to the election? It doesn't really matter. I think that um, uh, what matters is that a policy has been introduced. Wait, is it good? Yes, it's good. But implementation is not so good uh, for Nigerians. And All right. So something... may, I, may I please interject and quickly quote you know, from what is here? It says, the governor claimed the cash scarcity in the country was not unconnected with the efforts to ensure the APC flag bearer loses the election. He further claimed in the broadcast that it is important for the people of Kaduna State and indeed Nigeria to know that contrary to the public pro pronouncements and apparent good intentions, this policy was conceived and sold to the president by officials who completely lost out in the governorship and presidential primaries of the APC in June 2022. I, I, like I said earlier, I disagree with the governor. Um, it has no uh, connection uh, with uh, the plan of uh, to set up interim government of this of the great crisis um his party won the presidential elections yes uh the royal landmark um uh, 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 uh um so landmark failures that were recorded in some places but but uh, that did not invalidate the election it's been done and um um to according to what he's saying i think that uh, this is just uh, politicians trying to uh, heat up the, situ uh, the situation or try to buy uh, sympathy to their side. But um, by and large, elections have been held and Nigerians uh, should move ahead. And uh, whoever has been declared by the constitutionally recognized agency of government must be sworn in. Uh, if you feel like grief, because definitely people will feel like grief. The right areas, you can point out that uh, you have evidences that things didn't go well the way it should go. Then present it to the to the court with your evidence. I'm um, certainly, I'm sure, just we have seen elections upturn in this country in several, severally. So it won't be something strange or novel. So I think that the best way is to go out about this is to seek redress in courts, which they have actually done. They are they have uh, petitions in uh, the presidential election tribunal. Let's see the outcome. Mm. Well, um, one of the statements you made there said um, that people can actually um, go to court. Well. That has been one of the reasons why the DS has equally come out to say that they should also do the same. But uh, looking at some of the complaints made on social media and the protests, the ongoing protests, uh, the peaceful protests, let's use that word peaceful, happening in the Federal Capital Territory, uh, many are equally saying that they do not believe uh, in the courts. But that's the best thing that they can do, and like you've highlighted as well. But let me quickly bring up this one. Um, while that was ongoing, uh, the chief spokesperson of uh, a Labour Party, uh, Dr. Yanusa Tanko, has actually come out to uh, speak uh, after DSS made that statement. He said, and I would uh, mention and quote, he said, Nigerians won't be intimidated into submission. Uh, that's the reply uh, the Labour Party has for the DSS. Uh, the DSS alleged that some politicians were plotting to derail democracy and the Labour Party has said that they would not submit. Uh, they would go ahead to do that what are your thoughts concerning this yeah uh, for me i don't i don't discuss politics i don't speak for the government i talk security and safety as it concerns uh, the generality of people but i would say that um uh the labor party spokesperson is getting it wrong there um if you have grievances i, I believe that uh, his uh, presidential candidate was a signatory to the peace accord that were initiated and they all agreed to abide by the rules. Um, at, at no time did they say that they will not participate. And the rules, if you're law-abiding citizens, you must follow the constitutional means of seeking redress. That's the only alternative we have. It's, it's, so so uh, talking about uh, the, the DSS trying to intimidate Nigerians, I don't agree with that. It's their responsibility to warn uh, the government and to warn Nigerians about impending danger. And this definitely, I tell you, is an impending danger if we do not handle it carefully if we continue we allow the protest to be going on why do you protest that means uh, like he said they don't have the faith in the judiciary any longer so where do you run to is it by violence 
It, it doesn't help anybody really. I think that um, it's. Mr. Patrick, okay, I think um, we seem to have a network glitch there. Well, Mr. Patrick's uh, point, um, Olive, is uh, made clear that um, with what the DSS is seeing and what is ongoing, it's snowballing uh, very, very slowly uh, or very, uh, what's that word I'm looking for to redefine this? Uh, but in other words, he's saying that um, the way it's going, it could lead to something. Uh, that uh, That's why the DSS is actually coming out to say, listen, uh, we've got it for various quarters that these things may take place, hence why we need to put a stop to it now. Now, um, I guess it's back. I'd like to ask him, you know, some of the questions that we've heard is the fact, you know, we're hearing that someone did say that why has the DSS not taken the evidence that it supposedly has gathered maybe to a court of competent jurisdiction and, you know, to prevent this from happening. Uh, some have said that the DSS coming out to give these warnings based on uh, what he's heard makes it seem like they're running uh, blogging, online blogging. That why don't they gather this evidence and take it to the court? You're a security expert. What is usually the due process when this uh, DSS finds out that there are potential threats or there have been conversations about potential threats? All right. I, I, I I'll give you an instance. Um, my organization conducted what we call election um uh, threat analysis uh, before the elections. And what we did after analyzing uh, the, the so, uh, predicted, predicting the possible threats, uh, we, 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 we want Nigerian about that. And, and the security agencies uh, have it with them to be able to take action if there's need to do, uh, to carry out any action. And that is what the DSS is doing. I think that what the DSS has done is that after collecting information, collecting evidences, collecting and processing it to what we call intelligence, then they will have to present it. Listen, this is intelligence we have to the security agencies, then to the Nigerians, the citizens themselves who warn them of this. Then if the actors consign or those implicated in this uh, in the plan resist and continue with their plans, then that is when they can they can go out to start uh, what we, what we call interim investigation and arrest and before it comes to taking matters to court. So it's a process which they have just which did not just start today. They must have collected information and now is at the point of alarm, alerting the citizens about what is likely to happen. Then the next stage is if those actors insist on carrying out these things, then they will go on to to uh, arrest them and gather some more evidence, physical evidence this time around, practical evidence this time around, which they will present in court. So it's a process and they are, they are following up, following that process. And I think Nigerians should uh, be, believe in the institutions we have in currently, no matter how, how ineffective some of them might be, but some have actually proven that they can do their work right. In this regard, the DSS are on the right track. Right. Well, you said Nigerians should trust these institutions, but some have even accused the DSS of not trusting the judiciary by laying claims that one of the ways they would forestall this would be to carry out um, several frivolous cases. There really has been a breach of trust between the citizens and um, institutions that are meant to help us ensure that you know government moves freely and fairly. But we will keep uh, updating ourselves on this story and see how it plays out. Thank you very much, Mr. Peter Agbambu, for joining us this morning on the show. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, Patrick. Thank you.